hello everybody. Um, uh, hopefully everybody can hear me uh, loud and clear. Um, uh, welcome to today's um, Straban Business Engagement Forum. Um, actually, I kind of feel like I'm on TV or something here. It feels a wee bit different than the normal uh, Zoom calls, the way this is set up. I'm really impressed. So a wee bit nervous actually and, and impressed. Um, so as I say, uh, I want to thank everybody for um, coming along today to um, to what is our Straban Business Engagement event. We had a, a similar event earlier today um, uh, from a dairy perspective. Um, and I'm just going to um, just go through the format um, of, of, of today's uh, event. Um, there's going to be there's plenty of time uh, for for questions if you may have them, but there's also the opportunity to listen to a number of officers across Derry City and Strabane District Council on the, the range of initiatives, interventions and supports that are there and being provided um, uh, for, for Strabane in terms of specifically in relation to our COVID recovery uh, program. So in, in, in a wee minute, I, I'm going to be uh, showing a, a little recorded message, a video from our mayor. Um, uh, um, and following that, I um, have Jacqueline Worski, who is our uh, festival events manager within um, within council, who's going to chat a wee bit about um, who's waving there. Uh, and in fact, when I say your name, I want everybody you can wave. That's a good thing. I feel 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 empowered now. Um, who's going to be chatting a wee bit about animation um, uh, across Straban and a little bit potentially around what activities may be happening in terms of Halloween uh, and, and an overview of our Christmas program. Um, Jacqueline's going to hand it over to, to Tony Monaghan, who is our regeneration manager. Good to see him waving there. He's being very compliant. He works in Council's environment and regeneration uh, team. Uh, Tony's going to chat about just the, the planned physical and what, what improvements have taken place from an environmental perspective uh, in Straban um, already and what are planned over the coming weeks and months ahead. Uh, Tony then is going to hand it over to Tara. Tara Nicholas, who's waving, um, who uh, works within Council's business team as a business support officer. Tara's going to chat a wee bit about the various business supports that are, are out there, uh, specifically focusing on um, the, the, the COVID business grants and the, the business innovate, our new business innovation and growth support program. Um, last, but by no means least, Laverne O'Donnell, uh, uh, is going to chat about um, the various activities that are planned through the Straban bid, um, the, the activity, the various campaigns and the support that's available through through the bid itself. And I can see from from the attendee list that I can see on my screen that there's a number of people who would, be, who would, who would have a great knowledge in terms of and would support the bid um, uh, heavily and have done to date. So um, I guess it's, 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 uh, it's at this point, I'm going to ask uh, Leslie Ann to uh, start our video um, uh, uh, with our opening remarks from, from, from the Mayor of Derry City and Strabane District Council. Good afternoon, everyone. You're very welcome to our business engagement event, which has been led by officers from Strabane Bud and Council's business, tourism, events, and regeneration teams today. We are all acutely aware that the COVID-19 pandemic has had a devastating impact on many of the businesses in our city and district. Most have had to stop trading and many have had to rely on COVID-19 emergency support in order to survive. On some occasions though this has not been enough and we have sadly lost some well-known traders from our local business landscape. As we move on to recovery stage of this pandemic we have seen some restrictions being gradually lifted which have enabled businesses to gradually commence trading, albeit at reduced capacity. However many challenges and constraints still remain in the new operating environment that we find ourselves in today. Derry City and Strabane District Council have received significant government funding package of almost £1 million aimed at bringing trade and business back into our city and district. Throughout today's conference we will focus on three main themes. The first will talk about business support, the second about physical infrastructure and improvement and the third about marketing and animation activities. In addition to this, Laverne from Straban Bud will be providing the Bud's COVID Response Action Plan, which outlines key events and activities that the Bud will deliver in Straban up to December 2020. Government intervention and, con and the continued work of the Bud is hugely important in helping Straban readapt to the new way of working. 
It will help transform a number of areas across Strabane. It seeks to encourage the public back into our centres to shop, eat out and socialise in a safe environment. But we need your support to make this happen. Business engagement and participation are going to be essential to the success in everything we do. Today I want to encourage you to get involved and take advantage of the support that we have available to you. Thank you. I have indicated my job in council is the events manager within the council, um, the Derry Straban area. So we normally, normal years, deliver 16 events annually. And in Straban, those are events um, like Summer Jam, Straban Lifford Half Marathon, all those things that unfortunately we weren't able to have this year. But like all of you guys, we have been asked to think about things um, differently this year and how we might deliver things a bit differently now that I suppose um, the, we are moving hopefully out of um, um, our big lockdown stage and into more open times. I know obviously announcements were made yesterday and that is scary for everyone, but we will um, proceed onwards. And so what I'm going to do is talk you through some of the stuff that you will hopefully visibly see on the streets in the next week while. Um, and just past there in Straban Town, we had um, on Friday um, daytime and on Saturday daytime, uh, a programme called an Inside Out um, programme, which is basically some wraparound animation to support some of the other st um, stuff that my colleagues will talk to you about later on today. And really it's to bring and breathe a bit of life back into our town and city centre. So those these images that you, you see on your screen were taken at the weekend there. So there's various different things that will happen um, in Straban Town over a number of dates. Um, that we can hopefully all get a wee bit excited about. Um, so the Inside Out, Out program, um, the main purpose is to try and encourage increased footfall back into our streets in a safe and engaging way. Now, one of the ways we will be doing that is a lot of this, this animation is pop-up. It's mobile. So in the event that crowds gather, it can move on to a different street and to a different place. So that, you know, it's just to avoid those big gatherings. And it's, it's the, the things that we thought we could do and do very safely. But it's not just about the animation. It's also about, we talk about pop-up surprises, a little bit of festive fun, as local animation companies and performers meander through the streets of our city and town centre, sprinkling a little bit of magic. Um, so we're working with companies called, like In Your Space Circus, the Arma Rhymers, which you might have seen in Strabane Town on, on Saturday, Streetwise Circus, Footsteps, these guys do historical characters and, and again I know they were there in Strabane on Friday. So, and this is all to, to um, enhance the space but also to work um, with the businesses that, that are there already that might be perhaps opening up in terms of inside out dining experiences. We are also um, engaging street artists to do some graffiti art. So there's an image there of one that was done at the weekend. Um, there's some amazing talent that we have in, in our place. So um, we will get those guys out. Um, some dressing, some flags, bunting, some ambient music. Again, we have buskers out at the weekends and you'll see more of that. And of course, some street theater. Um, but the key thing is we, we've selected a number of dates between now and Christmas time. Um, we, the weekend just passed. Um, we, of course, will be doing Halloween. We do it big and we will continue to do activity around Halloween. So the dates planned for Straban are the 30th and 31st of October. As you know, traditionally, we've turned on our lights in Straban um, and it's always around the third weekend in, in November. Um, we won't be able to do our, our Christmas light switch on as we would have normally, but we are going to do some animation around those the dates of the 20th and 21st of November. And then, of course, we will have more Christmas themed animation on the 10th and 11th of December. So my message to you um, today in terms of businesses is to note these dates. Um, they will be in and around the town centre, they'll be dotted about, they'll be roaming um, and, and engage with them if you can and when you see them. Um, the, so there's an image taken from, from the weekend there of, of our travelling Obi. Ob 
um, who I think delighted audiences in Strabane. So from a Halloween perspective, we are going ahead with a Halloween fireworks display. It's a city centre location. For safety reasons, I can't tell you exactly where it is, but I can tell you it's on the A5 direction. Um, we are also working um, with the, uh, through the community groups um, to deliver carnival arts. So there's lantern installations and a lot of dress up activity. We're encouraging people themselves um, to dress up, do that in your homes, do that with your community groups that, that, that you work with. Um, and and um, obviously from a business perspective, you know, why not encourage your staff to dress up if you don't do so already and really to get enthused behind a, a program. Um, we will enhance our inside out animation period or program on those key dates in Strapan. We are going to do our much loved hay bale sculptural trail. I think we have at least 11, 12 confirmed. We might have a few more. Um, and the beauty of this one is that you can travel in and around the district in your car and get your selfies with, with the various different hay bales that are dressed. Um, Strabane and the Rural District does this so, so well and we will continue that. Um, so Ashley's busy working away on, on those. We will also, as other event organisers um, have been doing, uh, will do a lot of digital storytelling tell and music that will be translated on our various different websites around the time. And we're working closely with um, Laverne and the guys in the Straban Bids, Louise and Kevin and team in Straban Bids. And they're doing a number of different activities, including trails, working with the garden centre, possible drive-in movies. But I let them um, talk about those things. And, and it's great to, to see all that activity, hopefully, going ahead. What I will say is like yourselves, everything is subject to the latest guidance um, out from um, obviously government. Um, but we are full steam ahead in terms of our planning at this moment. Um, how you as businesses might get involved, um, again, in some way, maybe program some activity um, within your shop, within your retail centre, within your, your restaurant. Um, Dress up your windows, um, your shop fronts, host theme experiences and bring the true Halloween experience to life. Um, and more importantly, let us know about it because we can profile it through our digital assets as well and to, and to let people know that things are happening um, in the various different outlets. And that will be done. Our, our channels are, are very well and viewed um, through all the different social media channels and our what's -ons. There is a full branding toolkit available to download through our media centre on our Halloween web pages. I will um, quickly highlight a couple of other things that we're doing. Some of this will apply to you, some not, but um, where's Walter at Halloween? Walter, if you didn't know already, is the skeleton that's on the, the city um, coat of arms, Walter de Berg. So instead of a Where's Wally, we're going to have a Where's Walter. And that is basically a trail where businesses can um, get vinyl stickers and there's hidden passwords within the vinyl stickers. So it's just encouraging a bit of activity um, in and around Straban Town. And that will be connected to the, the celebrations in Derry, of course, as well. We, as always, will challenge you in terms of a TikTok challenge. We've been doing more of this recently, um, where businesses, you know, tell um, the world why, you know, Straban and Derry is the place to, to, to come to celebrate Halloween. So that could be anything from monstrous um, makeup to haunted hairstyles. So it's just really getting behind the Halloween theme and thinking of content. You know, once you send us through the content, we will endeavour to get that out through our, our channels. We're working with street artists to develop street um, graffiti art. Um, and we're also hopefully at Christmas time going to be doing Wonder Windows at Christmas and working with In Your Space. So that's animation in windows. So those are things to look out for and hopefully you'll agree are safe things to be doing at this um, time. For festive Christmas type experiences, there is more of an investment in terms of street lighting and trees. You'll be glad to hear. So while we can't bring thousands of people out to turn on the lights physically, we can do so virtually. Um, and we will enhance our Christmas themed anim animation through our Inside Out program. And we will have Christmas trails. And we, of course, will be working closely with the mayor to do very much community based Christmas experiences. 
So those are things to, to look out for. Um, just a few words on the marketing um, um, from my colleague Gronya. Basically, the marketing campaign around um, all of the activity that we're doing is uh, there's an eight month campaign happening behind the scenes, um, basically, and there's four phases to that campaign. There was um, launches in August, um, October, December, and then in January, February time. And you'll see there the brand is your small spend makes a giant difference. And really that is, is marrying up with the Tourism Northern Ireland brand of, you know, the small spend to a giant adventure. So you can see we're using similar fonts. We're, we're very much using um, local people in, and, and images from local shops. Um, and the, yeah, and it's quite big and vibrant. And that is all happening alongside the activities that we're doing and that my other colleagues will tell you about as well. Um, it's out in various different media channels. Um, so it's not just outdoor, there's digital, there's radio ads, there is press announcements. Oops. I know I have lost my slide, but anyway, um, it was really just how to, the, the last slide I had was on how you might get involved. So um, Tara is going to talk to you about the, the business grant scheme um, that we had open there. Um, but anyone that, that is successful through that business grant scheme um, will be um, profiled through or, or various different marketing channels. Um, so the guys will be in touch through that. And the channels include not just Facebook, but also Twitter and Instagram. Um, they will also, uh, there'll be a limited number of businesses chosen to be profiled as part of the campaign through photography and videography. And also then, of course, where we have our Inside Out animation program, you will be able to see um, that we try and profile your shop fronts, your businesses in that. So, if all being well, we're going to show a wee video now, which is a video that we had taken at, um, at the weekend, um, which is across both Derry and Straban, and it gives you a sense of what to expect through the animation projects. Um, so, um, Leslie Ann, if that can upload. I should have said at the start, um, you know, anybody that wants to ask any questions, they can use the chat box um, at the bottom of your screen and we can, we can deal with those or we can deal with questions at the end or after when speakers are, are finished there. But not sure if Leslie Ann's getting that loaded up or not, but. That's me, that's me. Don't, don't get excited. <laughs> I just, um, Leanne is now host and is yep. going to come. Yeah. The, these Zoom messages, these Zoom meetings could get you in bother. Um, it brings up your whole desktop if you haven't noticed already. So we had a, a, one of our colleagues earlier was playing a video that went on to the last video she played. <laughs> so.
Okay, that's me. I think we're going to pass to the next speaker. Isn't that right? Which is um, Tony. Tony, yeah. Is that right? Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, and that was, hey, my name is Tony Mullahan, and I'm the Regeneration Manager with the ICE at Amsterdam District Council. Um, and I'm just going to uh, uh, just bear with me a few seconds to uh, um, share the screen here. Just one second. Okay, uh, as I say, uh, you know, basically uh, Tony Mullahan regeneration section of the council, and we've been um, obviously working in preparing a plan to address, as I suppose, the challenges facing town, you know, town, our key, I say town and city centres within the district in relation to how we um, basically, you know, get people back into uh, those locations and try to contribute to confidence. As you can see, obviously already, uh, and as you'll see throughout the duration of today, um, in terms of the presentations, the, all of the programs have been uh, very closely coordinated uh, so that they really complement each other. Uh, and clearly from our perspective, the focus was around so coming up with a program that would deliver impact as quickly as could. And obviously one way of doing that was obviously through the, the business grant uh, element, whereby the money and the grants would open very quickly and get the money to where it was needed. But clearly behind that, then there were a series of other complementary uh, initiatives that would then sort of basically help and, and obviously add further, I suppose, uh, confidence to those. And from a town centre um, recovery perspective, you know, the key challenges arising from COVID-19, not just in our towns and city centres, but indeed, um, say, I say nationwide and beyond, is that there is the, the, the need to promote confidence that our town and city centres are a safe place to shop, visit and do business. Um, that they need to utilise and enable outdoor spaces to support business activity e.g. you know, um, cafes and pubs, etc. But equally, in addition to that, facilitating queuing outside of premises to facilitate retail and business premises, those which may be small on the inside, can't obviously, um, I say, can't accommodate social distancing and therefore the queuing element happens outside on the street. And just generally, you know, uh, coming up with initiatives to try to promote and ensure social distancing where practical. Uh, and then obviously looking at our existing public spaces uh, and public ground spaces and looking at maybe optimizing and repurposing those through the introduction of outdoor seating and dining, but also encouraging businesses through the pavement cafe licensing uh, scheme that uh, council has brought forward there during the summer to enable that street life to happen and create that ambience um, and vitality that town centers need. And indeed to deliver on, um, I suppose, you know, a, 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 I suppose a growing demand for people to be sitting outdoors and want to sit outdoors in comfortable and attractive spaces. And in addition to that as well, uh, you know, we've been looking uh, along with our colleagues in uh, Department for Infrastructure, Roads, in terms of creating new opportunities for pedestrians and cyclists and possibly looking at how we might, uh, in further phases, look at temporary vehicular traffic restrictions that basically uh, that provide maybe a better balance in terms of ensuring, yes, traffic flows, but also giving over maybe elements of uh, the, the certain streets or certain roads to pedestrians to promote social distancing and create uh, safe means of passage um, uh, to and from locations. Um, so in terms of the engagement uh, and analysis that we've been undertaking, um, just before the summer, the council established stakeholder forums for both Servan Town Centre and Derry City Centre, comprising of business representatives, um, organisations and statutory stakeholders. Um, we spent quite a lot of time uh, during the month of uh, June and July walking around, uh, carrying out the surveys and identifying uh, what the challenges were, where the pinch points might sit, but also the opportunities as well. Um, we then um, looked and said from that, that allowed us to develop a series of project proposals that we believe that would support the wider recovery effort and complement with the uh, business grant scheme, animation, 
and indeed the other initiatives planned as part of this recovery program. Um, we then worked collectively, collaboratively on a funding application uh, and a successful award to support all of the activities and indeed, from my perspective, the, the physical and environmental improvements that were identified for both Thrift Stravan and indeed Derry. And please do note that uh, we, secured, we have secured in the region of uh, £500,000 to support a series of interventions uh, from now until the end of this financial year in terms of um, contributing to uh, a more attractive and, and hopefully safe um, uh, town centre in, in the case of Stravan and city centre in the case of Derry. So in terms of the, the project elements, uh, for this particular phase that we're working on at the moment, uh, they're, they are largely uh, uh, what we would term street scale, streetscape and environment, environmental improvements. And they've comprised of uh, additional outdoor seating uh, and dining uh, opportunities. When I say that outdoor seating and dining, uh, we're seeing growing trends for people who may be buying, uh, coming into the town and city centre, buying, um, say, a sandwich or something or coffee and want to sit down. And clearly, uh, we're looking at a number of locations where we're increasing seating capacity, also looking a picnic table a capacity as well uh, and we've delivered um, and you, you may have seen around the tunnies there uh, just last week where we've done some work in that regard uh, again in addition to that looking uh, at, at locating planters and soft landscaping uh, the installation of decorative lighting and you'll see already on castle street and castle place last week uh, we've already installed that so we're obviously working through a program uh, as quickly as we can uh, and delivering obviously a series of interventions, uh, you know, in, in terms of lighting and, and the other uh, schemes that you're seeing there. In addition to that as well, looking, uh, and again, when we walk around Japan, there were some sites that were identified and brought to our attention as being maybe problem sites, derelict sites, and looking at how we might clear those and tidy those up. And again, to create that attractiveness that, that consumers are looking for when they come into uh, our um, town centres. And indeed then looking at temporary traffic restrictions, maybe, you know, going back to maybe repurposing streets temporarily, uh, looking at how that might be achieved. And again, one of the focuses that we've looked at has been in relation to Castle Street, which I'll go on to in a few moments time. And then obviously um, pavement extension. So for example, uh, we talked about queuing earlier on, um, you know, it's a premises obviously we want to try to identify where there are pinch points and where the, there are those pinch points, then maybe looking at some of the on-street parking uh, uh, bays and where possible and where practical, of course, in conjunction with local businesses, looking at maybe how we might extend the pavement out onto those to facilitate that queuing as well too. Um, so obviously, uh, if you look at the top right-hand corner, uh, we've also commissioned architects to prepare some, uh, I suppose, uh, high-level um, uh, urban design concepts for both uh, Derry and here in the case of Stravan, uh, and obviously working with um, the bids organisation and, and a collective of, of businesses, um, we've identified a real opportunity in Castle Street, uh, given uh, obviously uh, the fact that you know, the street um, benefits from being on a level surface, uh, as well as the fact that there's a number of food and beverage uh, businesses located on there as well, and all creating a very attractive landscape to maybe do something that would actually allow those businesses to come out onto the street, but equally allow pedestrians to maybe take advantage of that street. And, and obviously, um, you know, we're working on that actively at this moment in time. So if you look, um, you know, just at, at, again, this is very, very much uh, our designer's um, artist impression, but nonetheless, uh, something which we believe is achievable. So, you know, and again, we are looking at bringing forward uh, in Castle Street, the proposed environmental improvement scheme, which looks at how we just extending the footway uh, out onto the existing carriageway, as it were, uh, and um, designating, you know, a number of outdoor trading zones to support some of the, um, the food and beverage businesses located along there. The installation of decorative, decorative lighting, as you've seen, and also planting uh, and in conjunction with that, then the businesses, as we understand, are working on uh, a, a cluster approach funding application. And I know, obviously, my colleagues will go into that in a little bit of detail around the whole grant scheme. They undertake some complementary activity that will sit alongside that in terms of providing outdoor seating, retractable canopies, and indeed their own form of boundary treatment as well. So, this just gives you a visual idea of some of the concepts that we're looking to bring forward. Uh, in Mr. Van. So again, to the right hand side are just some examples of like our architects have been looking at other examples, both uh, uh, say in, in Ireland and indeed beyond, in terms of where 
where this is already happening, where, for example, streets are being, um, you know, obviously optimized more for pedestrians, uh, trying to strike a, a suitable balance between pedestrians and vehicular traffic, but equally also uh, utilizing public realm for outdoor seating and trading. And you're looking at some examples there to the right hand side. So the first phase streetscape enhancement proposals are currently focusing on some of the existing public realm and pedestrian locations. So uh, Castle Street, uh, obviously it's not a pedestrian zone, but we know that Castle Street has benefits from that level surface. So as you say, you've seen the plans there. Uh, we're also looking to bring forward now very quickly in the next uh, couple of weeks, uh, the Abercorn Square site, just to give that a tidy up adjacent to the Pagoda. Um, you know, you'll see there's uneven surfaces, the chairs and seats are in a really bad condition, uh, and it's about replacing those cleaning up that, the, the space in terms of the, 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 the actual pavement uh, and also uh, thinning the trees uh, and making it look more attractive and putting some lights around there as well. Um, on Main Street, we've identified the potential for some pavement extensions along there uh, to facilitate queuing, particularly there's some businesses along there where uh, that are experiencing some pinch points. And you'll see there just last weekend, uh, we've been doing some work around the tunnies in terms of opening that site up visually through the removal of the hedgerow but also introducing a series of seating and picnic table opportunities as well. And this is essentially our first phase focus for now. Um, so again, just very briefly, you know, obviously phase one deliver, delivery time scales, we're currently in probably around um, week two of that at the moment. It's a 48 week program. It's largely physical and infrastructural based with short lead in times. Although the challenge that we and indeed all the local authorities have faced is that um, everybody's looking for this equipment. Uh, you know, obviously there's a huge demand for this, so we're very, very much guided by obviously the supply and delivery uh, time scales as well. You know, as I say, we've already done some first phase delivery. Um, you know, but where we are looking at possibly temporary traffic restrictions. Um, you know, in temp you know possibly on Castle Street, where we might even maybe introduce you know some uh, controls along there. Again, the stress any controls would be um, would be temporary meanwhile and indeed very quickly reversible but nonetheless it's worth us considering along with the businesses a pilot approach to see how that might work um, and obviously if we're doing uh, schemes like that then it does rely upon us uh, working with colleagues in department for infrastructure roads in terms of how we embrace the new legislation to enable us to undertake such uh, works like that consultation with yourselves as businesses but also importantly, engagement with user groups, and particularly, uh, we've been engaged very closely as we've designed and delivered the, our program so far with the disability, some disability representative groups to ensure that we're creating accessible spaces for all. Um, and again, go back to my earlier point, program alignment uh, with cl the cluster business grant applications will be important as well. So we want to see if there's opportunities where we can augment our activities and our investment with the activities and investment of businesses who are benefiting from the business grant scheme, which you'll hear about very shortly. So in short, you know, that's a, a very quick um, fly through in terms of the work that we're doing at the moment. Really welcome, uh, and have really welcomed uh, the engagement we've had to date with the Strabane businesses. Very keen to ensure that we continue that engagement. Uh, and if there's any other uh, people here today who want to engage with us, then we are more than happy to uh, to come and catch up and, and have a conversation, socially distance, of course. Uh, and as I say, I want to thank you for your time uh, today. To and obviously, what I'm putting up here is just a list of uh, contacts within my team uh, who are uh, obviously who can be contacted. And, and Shona and Margaret, in particular, are uh, leading out on the Strabane uh, elements of the project. So again, you know, you've got contact details there, and please feel free to get in touch if you have any questions, queries, or want to discuss other matters any further. Thanks very much. Tony, thank, thanks very much for that. Um, there, I know that this is a Strabane uh, event, but I see a question there just in the, in the chat box, and uh, it's asking about, um, uh, is there anything for the waterside area outside of Ebrington Square, Spencer Road, or for example? Um, I don't know if you want to deal with that now, or maybe go back directly to the person, or... Well, I can, yeah, well, obviously, we, we, we've, uh, in terms of the waterside area at the minute, uh, Everington Square is a, is, a, is a key focus for us. Uh, but obviously, we're, we're very much open to other interventions in and around the waterside. Clearly, it is part of the city centre. Uh, we know that Spencer Road, and as part of the surveys, is very challenging in terms of the introduction of physical environmental improvements by virtue of the fact that we've got very narrow um, footway, or sorry, footpath widths on both sides of the street in addition to the very high volumes of traffic and also some of the parking and congestion problems on there as well. So that has been given 
due consideration. Uh, and obviously some businesses have spoken to us in relation to that and are, I suppose, acknowledge the, the challenges and the difficulties. However, if there are any specific areas that people want us to maybe have a, a further look at, then again, we're very open to that. Uh, again, this is a very much an evolving program. It's very much, you know, based on addressing immediate uh, immediate needs. If um, and if and where we can do that, of course, then um, we're more than we're more than happy to look at that. But again, you know, um, for us, it's about getting impact on the ground as quickly as we can um, and where it's needed. And obviously, um, if Spencer Road is somewhere that someone has suggestions for, then by all means, happy to have a conversation. Thanks. And thanks, Tony, for that. I mean, that was a really extensive presentation and lots of great work uh, ongoing and lots of great work to come. Um, I think um, there's a great opportunity in Straban Town, given the topography of it um, and given, uh, given the layout and the compact nature of those sort of main streets within that kind of red line. So um, look forward to seeing, seeing, seeing more of that as it develops. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to introduce uh, Tara Nicholas now at this stage and Tara is going to chat about business support. Great, thank you, Kevin. Um, I'm just going to share my screen with you all now. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see that. And so, hello, for those of you that don't know me, um, my name is Tara Nicholas. I am the business officer with Derry Straban um, District Council. And today I want to talk to you about two aspects of business support. Firstly, our business grant schemes, and then I will go on to talk about our new business support program, which has been launched just this month. So firstly, let's um, go to the business grants section. And hopefully this will, it's a bit slow on me this morning too, but uh, we'll give it a, give it a go. Let's see. Oh, here we go. <laughs> um, so the business grant scheme opened on the 4th of August, 2020. And to date we've received over 170 applications from across the council area. So it's great to see the engagement with us. Um, applications at the moment within the urban area are currently closed. However, they may reopen should further funding be released. However, we have applications still open for all businesses within the rural area. So an overview of the business grants. They're funded by the Department for Communities and Department for Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs as part of the COVID-19 Recovery Revitalization Programme. The financial aid package includes £350,000 for urban area businesses, along with an additional £148,000 from DERA for businesses that are located in rural areas. The scheme has been administered by Council and there's a rolling application process until all funds are spent. The main primary objective um, to be achieved by March 2022 is for businesses to achieve footfall levels and sales figures to return to at least 70% of levels recorded prior to the public health crisis. So how the fund, how the fund works? Well, the businesses must achieve initially a threshold score of 50% and provide all support and documentation as requested. Individual businesses can apply for grant aid from a minimum of £500 right up to a maximum of £3,000. Successful applicants must be able to purchase items which they can then claim back in line with their letter of offer. Applicants cannot start work until they receive their offer of letter or letter of offer. There's also a, um, an opportunity for businesses to apply as part of a collaborative um, to receive up to 25,000, depending on the number of businesses participating. Um, however, there should be a minimum of five businesses for each collaborative application. Businesses from the sectors below can apply for a grant, and these range for businesses um, within the retail services sector, arts, cultural, heritage venues, tourism, hospitality, and the collaboration of arts, culture, heritage, and hospitality businesses can also apply. So what can be funded? 
Well, this is a capital grant scheme. So eligible items can include, but are not exclusive to minor works to extend a layout of business premises, capital costs to facilitate health and safety changes to working practices. And this can include things like screen protectors and freestanding sanitizer stations. External um, COVID-19 signage can also be included to help promote awareness of social distancing measures in place. Additional items such as infrastructure to facilitate the use of outdoor space can include furniture, outdoor heaters, and barriers to facilitate queuing. Equipment also to facilitate digitization, for example, hardware such as laptops, iPads, and contactless payment solutions can also be included. External modifications to business premises such as awnings to protect customers are also an example of what can be applied for. So all the applications can be submitted online by visiting www.derrystraban.com forward slash business grants. However, we will also accept postal applications. Applicants must provide the requested information on the form and answer questions as fully as possible to allow a score above the threshold of 50%. A list of items intended to be purchased alongside three written quotes for each item must also be included. Support and documentation can be emailed to businessgrants at dairystraban.com. The support and documentation consists of things such as the three written quotes mentioned earlier, as well as a copy of the certificate of the public liability insurance and a business bank statement from within the last three months. You'll be notified of your outcome of your application as soon as possible, and if successful, a letter of offer will be issued. However, it's important to note here that no funding will be issued for retrospective works. And this must be, you must purchase all items um, in the future. And these will have to be listed and noted on your letter of offer. So applications, as I mentioned, are currently open for rural areas. So please do check our website and social media for updates for the urban area. It's currently closed at present, but this may reopen. So again, for more details and to apply, please visit www.derrystraban forward slash recovery. And any queries can be emailed to our general business grants email address at businessgrants at derrystraban.com. And just to note as well, if you do have an application um, which is ongoing and it was submitted before the 16th of September, and you have been contacted to supply outstanding information, just as a reminder again that this must be returned by 12 noon on Friday the 25th of September. So that's our business grants. So now I want to talk to you also about a new business support program that has recently been launched this month. And this is our business innovation and growth program called BIG. This was launched, as I was saying, in September 2020, and it runs right through to December 2022. And it aims to recruit 840 businesses by this time. So the Business Innovation and Growth Programme aims to promote business growth and innovation by helping businesses develop their skills and maximise on potential business opportunities available to compete in new markets via digitalisation and innovation. It aims to provide accessible, need-driven business support that is tailored to individual business requirements. We aim to engage with key business support stakeholders to develop a portfolio approach to business support in our council area. Businesses can then maximize on all the support available by onwards referrals to further support agencies. As part of the Business Innovation and Growth Program, we have a digital tech enterprise support program. And what, and what this entails, it will assist, com assist companies to develop and implement a digital transformation action plan, where this will address the business's key strengths, areas for improvement, and identify any actions for implementation. 
Once this is complete, we will then assign mentors to your business to provide one-to-one -one support based specifically on the actions outlined in the Digital Transformation Action Plan. Our target audience for this support program is IT and digital tech companies who will be eligible for a higher level of technical support. However, we also open this to non-digital companies for more general digital mentoring support. As part of this program, we will also be running sub-programs um, where businesses can get further support. These will include our Get Ready to Export program, our Social Enterprise Support Program, the Procurement Support Program, as well as 15 additional workshops that will be based around what our businesses tell us they would like to see. We will also hold four networking events. You're eligible to apply for the Business Innovation and Growth Program if you're a business located in the Derry City and Strabane District Council area and you have less than 50 employees. And you can also have the potential to create at least one full-time equivalent job in the future. And you can also demonstrate the potential to be a quality business referral to InvestNI and that you're not already an InvestNI client. So for further information on this program, please contact myself, tara.nicholas at derrystraban.com. And you can also visit our website, which will show um, the range of additional business support available throughout our business development team. And the website is www.derrystraban.com forward slash business. Thank you. Thanks very much, Tara. Um, uh, I just noticed somebody on the chat screen there. I think they're just providing a bit of clarification in terms of the website. The mm -hmm. website for any information on a lot of what you've heard today is dairystraban.com forward slash recovery. And then you can go into the business grants and that type of thing. Yeah. You may have covered this in your presentation, uh, Tara, but mm -hmm. so the, the business grants are, 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 are currently, we're not accepting applications at, at present, but is that likely to reopen again or? It's, we had to close it at um, present at the moment because we have a limited amount of funds available um, for the, um, both the rural and urban grants. Now, we haven't committed to the full amount of the grants available for um, the businesses located in our rural areas, which is why that's still open. But at the moment, we've received several applications for our urban areas. And whilst a lot of those are still in process, we have committed the full amount available at present. So um, we had to close it temporarily, but um, we have some open applications out there, which we are awaiting on um, further support and documentation. So um, if some of these applications drop off or indeed if more funding becomes available, we will reopen it. But it's important to keep an eye on our website and our social media because um, as soon as this application reopens again for the urban areas, we will announce it on there first. Okay, that's good. So watch this space. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, as potentially as applications are assessed, um, there may there may be some may, some funding might may come back on stream. Just just okay. just important to clarify that one. Mm -hmm. That's great, Tara. Thank you very much. Okay. So okay. I am going to hand over now to to Laverne. He's been waiting patiently, and um, I, I, I would imagine this is going to be an absolutely amazing presentation. Oh, um, no and so there's absolutely no pressure in terms of being the closer of any type of business engagement event and the thing that people remember whenever they, they finish their, their Zoom call for today. So I'll hand it over to you, Laverne. Okay, goodness. That <laughs> didn't help the nerves at all. So I'm just sharing my screen here now. So can you all see that? Yeah? Okay. So, uh, as Kevin said, I'm going to provide you with an overview of the plans that BID have uh, for the next few months. Overall, BID and Straban have committed uh, to spend £50,000 um, towards initiatives which aim to promote the town as a destination to visit, to shop in and to enjoy. Um, and also to drive footfall into Straban Town, we aim to encourage businesses and the community and the public um, to get engaged in these initiatives. 
So first of all, when we're looking at arts, culture and events, following on from what uh, Jacqueline said, obviously in the current climate, we are looking to take an approach that seeks to avoid large crowds uh, gathering or dwelling in one space. But we still want to spread festive cheer and to animate the town centre and to provide entertainment for people. So one of the ways that we are going to do this is we're hosting a drive-in cinema that will be in the car park at the Canal Basin. And this will run on the 30th and 31st of Halloween. And we aim, uh, situation permitting, to run that again at Christmas time. As Jacqueline mentioned, the Hay Bale Sculpture Trail, which has been so successful in the past. So BID are supporting that in order that that can be extended uh, and attract those visitors further into the town centre as well. So for Christmas, O'Neill's has very kindly come on board again to uh, sponsor the dressing of the tinnies. This year, BID will also sponsor a light installation. So that's going to tie in really well with, as Tony said, there's going to be seating and picnic areas around there. We're also going to have a 20 foot Christmas tree um, and some light installations that are LEG Christmas packages as well. So it's really about spreading that best of cheer and being a site for people to enjoy and um, for visitors to the town to, to see as well. So better also working in partnership with the Alley Theatre on a European programme, which is the development of a literary tourism product. So in this case, it's going to focus on the work of Flan O'Brien. And what we're doing with this programme of work is we're identifying key resources in the Straban area that can be used in a tourism package which will then be promoted to both uh, motivated tourists, so those are tourists that are specifically interested in cultural tourism and literary tourism, but also to accidental tourists, so people that may be visiting other parts of the region or district and are looking for something different to do. And it's about creating this opportunity to bring them into the town and to show them everything else that's also there. As part of this, we'll be engaging with businesses in the area who may not traditionally be engaged in cultural tourism, but might be able to offer products or services which are complementary to the trail so that they can take advantage of these additional visitors and also add value to the trail as a whole. So for Halloween, uh, we have the Halloween shot window competition. Again, this is about animating the town space and about attracting people to come in and visit and get involved. So for this, we have three prizes for the top three businesses. There's a first prize of a thousand pound, a second prize of 500 pound and a third prize of 250 pound. So the Halloween shop window competition will open on the 5th of October and that runs until the 31st of October. And winners will be chosen by the public via an online voting platform. Now, our reason for this obviously is to attract visitors and let people know that this is happening. So to do that and to really get that word out, especially online um, where a lot of activity is now happening, we're gonna be running a Halloween selfie competition. So this is where members of the public take a picture of themselves at their favorite Halloween window. And then they have to share that to other contacts, again, then spreading that word wider to their network of contacts. And in order to encourage them to do that, we will have four prizes of 50 pound gift cards that can be won. For Christmas, we are going to um, use the same campaigns and our learnings from them. So the Christmas shop window competition and the Christmas selfie competition will always run. As well as that, we have the 12 days of Christmas campaign. So with this, BID will purchase products from 12 businesses within Straban and use these to create a gift hamper, the ultimate gift hamper, which will then be used as a prize again for a viral uh, marketing campaign to get people engaged and liking and sharing. We know um, from the experience of other towns and cities across the UK and Ireland that use the gift card that a large proportion of people that buy the, the gift card 
are from outside of the local area. So there are friends and our family that are living either abroad or in the UK or uh, in the, down south in Ireland. So in order to tap into this, uh, there is a national town and city gift card campaign, which is the Great Christmas Gift Card Campaign. And Bed and Stroban will be participating in this in order to further raise awareness of our brand, of the shops that accept our card, and of the businesses that we have here. So again, this is a viral gift campaign, and it's around the theme of sharing and giving. And there is a first prize for uh, the winner of £1,500 worth of town and city gift cards. This is a, there's a dedicated website which is managing this, but that will tie into our Bid Instaban website, which will also highlight all of the businesses here which accept our gift card. On top of that, Bid are running a very ambitious marketing and heavy marketing campaign to further promote the gift card and the businesses that accept it. So we have a billboard marketing campaign, we have radio advertising, we have promotional videos that will be created in partnership with influencers and bloggers, again, further promoting our businesses to their network of contacts. We'll also have a digital and social media campaign um, and print advertising. So we will have posters and flyers that will be distributed to every house and business uh, in the region. Finally, it's really about how we can help our businesses. Our aim is to promote our businesses, what they're doing, their products, their services to the widest community possible. So we really want to hear from you. We want you to get involved, get engaged and let us know what you're doing. You can send us through your news, your offers, your events and we'll help promote those through all of our platforms. We're also running a series of business spotlight features which is about shining a light on the person behind the business. So what it is that you're doing, what you love about your business, your products, your services, and your hopes for the future. This will take the format both of a blog on our website, it'll be shared on our social media platforms, but that will also tie into the wider small spend giant difference campaign. So it will be promoted further afield as well. So to get involved, you can contact me about those, but also do with the Halloween shop window competition. If that's something that you're interested in, get in touch. We'll be promoting the businesses that are involved on our website and have um, a list so people can know where to go and where they can visit. So that's my details there. If you'd like any more information, uh, the email is info at bidinstraban.com or you can give me a call. That's the council number 71253253 and my extension is 6671. Okay, thanks very much, Laverne. Uh, that was fantastic. Lots going on, lots of activity, lots of promotion. Um, uh, big focus on Shop Local, clearly through the, the gift card. Um, which, which, which had a really strong year last year. Um, and what we're hoping for um, is that it'll have an even better uh, year this year. Um, before I do um, uh, finish up, um, to Tony um, enjoyed his time so much, he wants to come back for a wee bit more. Um, and, and, and it's just some further comments, I think, in terms of revitalization. So yeah. go ahead there, Tony. Yeah, Kevin, it was just in response to the query that's been um, put forward by one of uh, the audience members um, in relation to, and I know it relates to obviously Derry uh, as opposed to Savannah, but they had obviously asked that Spencer Roden had given just a very update in relation to this programme. But I think it's also important maybe to um, just to make um, the, uh, that um, um, audience member aware that um, the council are already in the process of designing at the design stages of a revitalisation scheme for Spencer Road in the waterside and taken in elements of Lower Chapel Road and also Dungiven Road. Uh, and we have a design team appointed already in terms of um, looking at uh, shop front improvements um, and looking at how we address, uh, say, derelict sites and also facades. So this is a completely independent standalone program. And again, that's very much um, active at this moment in time with the intention to have the design work completed um, by the end of this year uh, and to go back to the funder for funding for the capital element of that. And the capital element of that could well be, you know, and again, there's no guarantees at this stage, but it could be in the region of around, uh, around a half a million pounds 
for us to deliver um, a capital revitalization program uh, for that locality. Um, and within that, you know, businesses may wish to take advantage of maybe how they reorientate and refocus the designs of their shop fronts in order to maybe to meet some of the challenges coming out from COVID. So just again, it was something that I forgot to mention on the back of that initial question, but I thought it was important just to clarify. Kevin, thanks for that opportunity to clarify that. Thank, thank you, Tony. Um, so so I, I guess, I mean, in, in, in trying to sum up, the um, first thing I would, I would like to do is thank um, our panelists um, for their informative um, uh, uh, and, and I might add excellent presentations. Um, so that's obviously Jacqueline, Tara, who's, who's just left, Tony and, and Laverne. Um, all, all, of, all of the team um, remain available. Um, we're, we're contactable obviously by a email and, a, and, and through, through the website. I think that Leanne's going to probably put up the contact um, details now as I'm speaking. Um, uh, I suppose just, I, I guess, obviously, and we've all probably are, are fed up hearing the, the kind of um, cliche about the, 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 the strange and unprecedented times that we're, that we're operating in. Um, and I think that we probably over the summer had um, kind of um, started, to, started to, to feel a lot more optimistic around um, how, how business was opening up, how the economy was starting to recover and how, how we were trying to get back to some form of normality. Clearly, um, over the last week or so, um, right across uh, this district, um, there, there, there have been some, um, that, that, that optimism has probably been tempered a little bit in terms of some of the restrictions and stuff that are coming into place. Um, and, and we don't know what, what, what's ahead of us, but what we do know is that I think that the work that has gone on across business, primarily driven by business people, but supported through the officers that you see on this, on this um, uh, session um, and across council and, and indeed our government partners, the work that has gone on in that period, really I think will prepare us as best as we possibly can from an economic perspective to potentially do business uh, um, uh, in, in restricted times. Um, we're coming in, in terms of retail um, to what is the most important uh, three months of the year. Um, it's uh, businesses are going to have to potentially come up with innovative ways to get their products and services out there and get people buying them. Uh, from a bid perspective, we are there to support that. I think that the gift card is a great um, tool to be able to do that um, and, and to potentially get, get, get revenue into your, your businesses. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that we're here over the next period of time. I'm sure as the months go by, we will, we will, we will do a follow-up event to this one to give people an update as things change um, and, and, and to potentially talk about what we've achieved since, since chatting to you guys today. So I guess if you have any further questions or queries, you see the numbers and the sorry the emails and the and the and the social network details on the on the screen, but you also have our details too. So any one of us are, are obviously contactable. So at that point, I will end and thank everybody for for taking part, and um, all the best. Hi everyone, thanks, Kevin.